Okay. Sorry, there was a little disturbance. That's fine now. Okay, I hope you have heard what I said. You do the notes, write the notes, make time as well as to plan and study. You don't keep anything for the last minute. I hope you have gone through what I have taught. Already some of the notes I have given. Most of you have submitted uh, on time and they have said, you know, I have completed the assignments, I have completed this, I completed that. Okay, well and good. I have noted all those. They have given time of submission of the date. You have time. Take your time and submit. Whatever assignments I have given to assignments, that's more than enough for the time being. Please do it and go ahead. So last class, we have, uh, I've said the main features of a cell, mainly the plasma membrane, okay, cytoplasm and the nucleus. We have done with the plasma membrane. You should know all those features. If I ask you questions, you must be ready to answer. Okay, and then about cytoplasm, and then we have the nucleus. Now we will be going to nucleus. Nucleus again, the same old thing, but a little more uh, we, in detail we will be studying. Nucleus, we have already studied, it's a very important part of the cell. It's placed in the center of the cell and it's a very important part. I've given an image, I think it's there also in the text. Try to make it, uh, I think it is clear on your window also. Here, what is nucleus? We already know it is a spherical shaped body. The darkly colored spherical or oval dot like structure near the center of a cell is known as nucleus. So, nucleus I've given, you can see if the text is open, you don't need a text right now. You can later check on, concentrate on what I'm telling and what is given on the slide. So, it will be easier and you can write down the important points. When I have highlighted in red, it's understood those are the important points where you have to know. So, the nucleus is a darkly colored spherical or oval dot-like structure near the center of a cell is known as nucleus. Nucleus earlier also we have studied in the eighth grade. We also know that nucleus has a covering or a double layered covering called the nuclear membrane. It is not new, you already know this. It has a nuclear membrane. It, ha it has a double layered covering called nuclear membrane. When I say points by point, you must understand these are very important. They might ask you, write a short note about nucleus. You must be ready to write such features or characteristics of nucleus. You cannot just leave the point, you, can, you cannot just write one or two lines and just leave it. You should write what is needed. So be along with me and I hope each one are you with me right now. Now we have, when we know, we have already studied it has a nuclear membrane that is double layered covering. So what does it, you know, what, how does this nuclear membrane help? It has pores. See, when I have highlighted this, it is understood this is important. It has pores. What is this pores? Why you need? It allows the transfer of material from inside the nucleus to its outside. So, the nuclear membrane has pores which allow the transfer of material from inside the nucleus to its outside. See, now we are going in detail about each structure. Earlier in it, we had just a small, you know, a small bit of nucleus, we had a small bit of cytoplasm and that's it and we are done with it. No, now in this chapter, as I said, we'll be learning more in detail. So, you might find so many things running around your head, don't worry. Okay, we, I will take you as like that, how you feel, because I know what you are going through now. So it will be taken, the class also will be taken just like that. Okay, let's move on. The fluid outside the nucleus and within the plasma membrane is known as the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance which is in the cell. So I've just mentioned, this just mentioned in text also, the fluid which is outside the nucleus and within the plasma. You can write what is plasma membrane can be written as a gel like substance or you can mention it like this also the fluid outside the nucleus and within the plasma membrane is known as cytoplasm so we have learned, we have read earlier it is an oval spherical like shaped structure not like structure which is found in cell then around the uh, nucleus we have a double layered membrane uh, we, it is called nuclear membrane and what, how it helps? The nuclear membrane has pores which allow the transfer of materials from inside the nucleus to its outside. Now let's move on. 
by now i think you have already you, you are able to read and uh, i know you have seen words which is very familiar to you the nucleus what does it contain it contains chromosomes chromosomes and you know that they are thread like structures or rod now we have a new thing like we can tell it like the nucleus contains chromosomes which are visible as rod shaped structures we can give another name like this rod shaped structures when the cell is about to divide so the nucleus contains chromosomes which are visible as rod shaped structures when the cell is about to divide we all know this we have learned in it what why, what is the use of that and all that we are going in detail a little more detail in it now what does it contain chromosomes contains information for inheritance inheritance means transfer of characters from the parents to the offspring to the next generation okay so whatever characters well the genes or whatever characters your father is that some some of you must be oh my god you look like your mom Oh, some of you must be. Oh my God, you look like your dad. Ditto. <laughs> Don't some people say like that? So this is what is happening. You look exactly your exact copy of your mom, or exact copy of your dad, or maybe your exact copy of your grandma or your grandfather. Okay. Oh my God, look at him. He's exact copy. No change, nothing. The exact version. So these guys they play a great role in this. Okay. So and I have mentioned the the class which I have taught. I didn't mention why it is because of this and uh, why we say, "Oh my God, you are exact copy of your father or your mother." It's all these guys play a great role. Now chromosomes contains information for inheritance of characters from parents to the next generation. How? In the form of RDA DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid molecules. Important. this spelling and what is or expand dna or what is or you know they will ask you what is the full form of dna you should know that it is deoxy ribonucleic acid i hope you have understood till what i've taught because i told you each organ or each part is not easy to just rush and teach you you might find so many things running so this will be taken just like this so that you know each and every line of each whatever i'm talking about so i have told here it contains chromosomes they are rod like shaped structures when their cell is about to divide and chromosomes contains information for inheritance for transferring characters from parents to next generation in the form how what what is who is playing a great role there the dna r d r dna okay the deoxy ribonucleic acid molecules now we have mentioned about dna again they're saying chromosomes are composed of dna and protein they are composed of dna and protein now what all else it contains these molecules contains the necessary information or whatever information it contains information necessary for constructing and organizing cells the so dna plays a great role it helps in the organization constructing of these cells Okay, DNA is very important. They they contain this. They contain the chromosomes. They contain the composed of DNA and protein. Now, DNA molecules they contain the information. What information for what? To construct and organize the cells. For constructing and organizing these cells. Now, the the main who is playing the great role in it. I'm sure by now somebody is reading. Hmm. the functional segments of dna are called genes the functional segments of dna are called genes so genes they play a great role now we go move forward here you can see in a cell which is not dividing in a cell which is not dividing the dna is present in the part of chromatin material there are another chromatin material present these structures are present in the nucleus so in a cell which if the cell is not dividing the dna is present in the part of 
chromatin material. Chromatin material is present in the nucleus. Now, how does it look? You can see how does it look. The chromatin material and the chromosomes. It is, you can see, the chromatin material is visible as entangled. Entangled? You can see it's entangled. You see when you keep a lot of thread structure, I mean the thread, uh, the normal thread which you use for stitching clothes and if you entangle it, how it will be the same way. So it is visible as entangled mass of thread-like structures. So what is, how is chromatin material visible? They are visible. How do they look? They look, they are visible as entangled mass of thread-like structures. I've given how does it look and when the cell is about to divide. Okay, when the cell, so in the beginning I mentioned a cell when it is not dividing, the DNA is present in the part of chromatin material. But one, now when the cell is about to divide, the chromatin material gets organized into chromosomes. I've given how it is. So if the cell is not dividing, the DNA is present in the chromatin material. But once the cell starts dividing, the cell, the chromatin material, gets organized to what we know as chromosomes. I hope you have understood this. Read this. Understood there because nucleus has a lot of features in this. Here, see I told you this, it's still the nucleus. The nucleus plays an important role. It's a central role in cell reproduction. That means the process when a cell divides, a single cell divides and form two new cells. So nucleus, it plays a great role or central role in cell reproduction. That means a process with which a cell divides and forms two new cells. I hope you have understood this. Now, along with the environment, nucleus, it has, it plays more important roles. Nucleus plays a very important role in determining the cell will develop and what form it will exhibit at maturity. So nucleus is center most and it has a great role in all this, how the cell will develop and what all it should exhibit. The nucleus plays a very great role in it. It helps to determine the cell, how it should develop and what form or exhibit at maturity, how it will develop and how it will exhibit. And only this is achieved only how? Through directing chemical activities of the cell. So this is all done, chemical activities happens in cell. So the nucleus plays a great role in how to determine the cell, how it will develop and how it will exhibit at maturity. So these are the features, that is why I said questions like this, write a short note about nucleus, maybe a five marks, maybe a three marks question can come. So you have to know this. So I think this is clear. Please go through Today itself, whatever I'm, I'm doing, please grow, go through it. Then only you will be able to understand what I've taught. Okay, here central role in cell reproduction. That means a single cell divides and forms two new cells. And here the nucleus plays an important role in determining the cell, the way the cell should develop and exhibit its characters. And this is achieved only through chemical activities of the cell. Now we have learnt about prokaryotes and we have learnt about eukaryotes. Okay, prokaryote that is also that is also that is also mentioned. We have learned about prokaryotes. Okay, they have membrane brownless. So they don't have a membrane. Membrane. Mem uh, I can hear some disturbances. Please, um, are you are you guys with me, or are you disturbed with something? Please mute up your uh, mics if it is on. Okay. Let's come back. In few organisms like bacteria, the nuclear region is poorly developed. They don't have a proper nuclear region. Okay, due to why? Because of the absence of nuclear membrane. So such an undefined nuclear region containing only nucleic acids is called as a nuclear. Nucleic acids where DNA and something called RNA, they both constitute to form what are nucleic acids. It's called a nucleoid. Again, I'll go. In few organisms like bacteria, the nuclear region or nuclear region is poorly defined. 
the membrane, the nuclear membrane is poorly defined. There is no, there is absence of nuclear membrane. They don't have nuclear membrane. I said it's very light, it is very, it is not that visible. They are lightly seen. But when we say, we have to say it is absence of nuclear membrane. Such an undefined nuclear region containing only nucleic acid is called nuclear. Nucleic acid constituted of DNA and something called RNA, ribonucleic acid. That's just for your information so that you don't, you don't get confused. These two together you have the nucleic acids. Now such organisms, we have already learned about these, uh, what we call them. Such organisms that lacks a nuclear membrane are called prokaryotes. Okay? The organisms which lack nuclear membrane, we did in grade, grade prokaryotes and you know, eukaryotes, the differences we have learned. So this again they are mentioning in the same the nucleus part, they are, uh, they are just repeating this. You, I know most of you know this, but we have to go through this again. So organism that lacks a nuclear membrane are called prokaryotes. Are you guys with me? I hear so many of you are disturbed and talking. See children, if you do, if you are not with me, you will find it difficult later. So kindly concentrate on what I am teaching and be with me, be along with me. Okay, so I hope you have understood this. The main new word here, we have the nucleoid and the nucleic acid. Rest all is familiar to you. So prokaryote that lacks nuclear membrane. Obviously, the other one, if the, these guys, if the, these organisms lack nuclear membrane, the other person, the eukaryotes, they have nuclear membrane. Just given in a little more better way, I mean how pro primitive or primary karyot or karyon nucleus. You have to know this. Okay, pro, it's primitive. Pro primitive or primary karyots, it's nucleus, karyon nucleus. Now, what are eukaryotes? If the other one, if they are prokaryotes, are having, they lack nuclear membrane. Eukaryotes, they are having nuclear membrane. They are enclosed with nuclear membrane. Organisms with cells having a nuclear membrane are called eukaryotes. I know most of you, yes ma'am, I know this. Yes, you know, but we have to go through this. Now, prokaryotes also lack other cytoplasmic organelles than seen in eukaryotes. Prokaryotes, they don't, they also lack not only nuclear membrane, they lack other cytoplasmic organelles. So many of the functions of such organelles are performed by poorly organized cytoplasm. On the whole, prokaryotes and eukaryotes are different. Prokaryotes, they lack nuclear membrane. The other one, they're having nuclear membrane. And prokaryotes, they also lack cytoplasmic organelles. Okay, but, but it's seen in eukaryotes. So when you ask uh, what are prokaryotes, you should know or define eukaryotes, you should know and the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. This is what the, the we normally ask questions there here. Uh, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Again, now we have done with the nucleus. We ended with prokaryotes and uh, eukaryotes. Go through it, the features, the whatever characteristic I've said, I've made it simple for you to understand. Go to the text. I'm sure by now most of you are already having the text open and underline the important points. Now we have we are finished with plasma membrane. We are done with nucleus. Now we will go to the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is also nothing new. I mean, you know, cytoplasm. We have mentioned also now in an easy way what a cytoplasm is. It's really like spin or the fluid that is uh, within the cell, outside the nucleus and within the plasma membrane. So the fluid content inside the plasma membrane, you can make it more specific. The fluid content inside the plasma membrane is called the cytoplasm or the jelly-like substance which you have done. It also contains specialized cell organelles. Again, we know that organelles like mitochondria, we have the ER, the endoplasmic reticulum, all those. So those are the organelles. And we have said the cell just cannot live like that. They need all these organelles to function properly. Now, each of the organelles perform a spe specific function for the cell 
okay the division labor the division labor which i said an example has given for in case of humans that is stomach has its own role for the digestion process the heart it pumps blood so i've given to remember only we can remember through examples what is it so each cell has its own functions so each of the organelles perform a specific function for the cell all these cell organelles are enclosed by membranes okay here again not new the fluid water cytoplasm or defined cytoplasm the fluid content inside the plasma membrane is called the cytoplasm and what does it contain it contains many specialized cell organelles we know what is we are going to learn in detail about it and each of this organelle they perform a specific function without this organelle a cell cannot live and move on. each organelle they play a great role in the cell okay we have mentioned what is division of labor also i have mentioned with examples and all cell organelles are enclosed by membranes we can only go like this we have to go like this so that you understand each and every line write a short note in cytoplasm you must be ready and be quick in writing maybe a three marks or nucleus can be three marks five marks so you have to write it correctly with all the features which i'm mentioning like this now we have already mentioned the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes now the significance of the membrane okay uh, can be best illustrated with the exa of example of viruses that is coronavirus obviously viruses they lack membranes they don't have membranes so what they lack any membrane so and hence they do not show any characters of life how do they show their uh, presence they enter a living body obviously virus enters us that's what happened in coronavirus now they enter a living body and they use the host as a cell machinery to multiply we know now how we are affected with this coronavirus we say virus lack any membranes they don't want all this they are ready to enter into us through us and what do they do they attack us they multiply we are the host and these guys the viruses they just come up and they enter a living body and they use the host cells machinery to multiply so virus they don't need any membrane but once they find they get their host that's what's happening with coronavirus they don't need a membrane as such but how is this coming to be they come into us into we are the host and then the virus what happens it just multiplies that's what's happening and so sad to know that many of us are uh, the coronavirus has created a lot of confusions lot of problems and people are dying uh, let's hope that you know this comes down and we have uh, less number of death so we should know that the membranes whatever membranes we have example i've given coronavirus so that you know it more better and you will understand better viruses they lack any membranes they don't have any membranes but to show their activity or to show how smart they are what do they do they enter a living body like us like humans one living body they have to show what they are they don't need all this membrane and all the stuff but they just show how they are and how active they are by entering the host host cell machinery to multiply once they are into us they just multiply that's what's happening why i said this because so that you understand more better so let's move on here eukaryotes prokaryotes we have mentioned prokaryotes they don't they don't have a well defined nuclear membrane but eukaryotes they do have a well defined membrane and you prokaryotes they don't have they lack cytoplasmic organelles that's what i mentioned and the others they have all this here now i said in eukaryotes lot of chemical activities are required to support these complicated structures in eukaryotes lot of chemical activities when i have highlighted in red you should understand that is important so in eukaryotes lot of chemical activities are required to what to do to support the complicated structure and function so to keep these activities of different kinds separate from each other cells use a membrane bound like little structures inside them called organelles 
nucleus is an example. I've given nucleus an example. Eukaryotes, a lot of chemical activities are required because it is the complicated because it's complicated structure and function. So to keep these activities of different kinds separate from each other, the cell the uses membrane bound structures inside. There are membrane bound structures inside called organelles called organelles and nucleus is an example. I hope all of you are with me. So many things will enter your head. So many things might go out of your head. Don't worry. Just go through it. You have to read your text well. Some of you as a teacher, we just have to learn notes. No, my dear children. Some of you came to my window and asked, teacher, just notes is enough. Should we read the text? No, you should read the text very well. Text is very important as well as whatever notes I'm giving, you have to write and as I said, plan yourself. Don't say, oh my God, so much notes. Why is so much notes? You can plan yourself and study this. Plan, make a timetable, how, what? Because the mode of learning is teaching is this way. So we have to find a way for yourself, I mean for yourself, how to see or what about us. We are having a different mode of learning now for you. We are teaching in a different mode. So we are finding time and ways to make it better for you. I really miss you all. I really miss each one of you. I wish all this comes to an end and we are back to school. Most of you are missing your friends. I know I miss you all. We all miss you. Okay, so understand we have to be safe. You guys have to be safe. That is why we are telling we are going on with this. We can only tell you, children, go through the text, learn it well, write the notes neatly. Children, don't give haphazard notes just because to get over with it. Take your time, submission date is given, and give it then. So I hope you have understood this, okay, because the in eukaryotes, lot of chemical activity is required for this structure. So they have cell, the cell use membrane bound structures inside them called organs, organs you know, and nucleus is an example I've given. So we have done with the nucleus, okay, we've done with cytoplasm and I'm giving you what is there in cell organelles. So we are going forward, we'll be going forward with the ER, the mitochondria, the plastids, there are several or more cell organelles in that so we will be going in detail about it. We, if I, if I, we can just finish up but no, unless and until it's explained slowly like this only then it will enter, enter your little heads. Now here are some of the uh, important examples now of the things what you are going to learn more in detail, the characteristics of it, the features of it, the functions of it, what it is. Some important examples where we're going to learn ER, when I say ER, what is teacher saying? Endoplasmic reticulum or Golgi bodies or Golgi body as, or apparatus you can say. Then the lysosomes, then mitochondria, teacher's favorite. <laughs> Last day, every time, mitochondria powerhouse of the cell. Plastids. Plastids, there's one thing very important or the difference, it is there, where it is found. Yes, some of you have to, uh, yes, it's found only in plant cell, it is not seen in animal cell. And they are important. Why these are important, these cell organelles important? Because they carry out some of the very crucial functions in the cell. Some play a very important role in the protein synthesis. Some play, a, they, are, they have to function. Very important functions are done by these cell organelles. That is why I thought, you know, to give you what are the most important ones, the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi bodies, or the Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, the mitochondria, and plastids. They are important. Why these cell organelles are important? Because you should know that. See, I've just highlighted and it does not make the question can come. Why are these cell organelles important for the cell? Because they carry out some very important function in cells. So I hope you have understood or at least you have, you have, got, you have got an idea what you have to write for the nucleus and what is happening in the nucleus or what are the structures, main important structures there, the chromosomes, the DNA, you have gone through all, we know this but it went a little more in detail, okay, then about the cytoplasm, cytoplasm is not so much but uh, we have to know, you know, the main part 
uh, what is cytoplasm or define cytoplasm. Then I've mentioned about prokaryotes uh, and eukaryotes. You have to know them. The differences can be asked there. Mainly uh, the question there, uh, the differences about them. Okay, uh, and they can ask you or expand uh, what do you know about prokaryotes and uh, what or one mark question or what do you know about eukaryotes. Then I've just given a small portion is there in your text, cell organelles. Okay, they can ask why are cell organelles important? Okay, because they carry out very important crucial function cells. And then I've just mentioned about the viruses, they lack mem any membranes, but how they play their growth or how they become smart and they come and attack us. They use our body, they come into our body, they come into our body, they use us as a host. That is what is happening now, which is very sad. And they multiply. You can't just imagine how they multiply. They multiply very quickly. That is what is happening now. Uh, next is the ER or the endoplasmic reticulum, which I think I will take it in the next class. That is better because already so much you have gone through the nucleus, the cytoplasm and a short portion in the cell organelles. So this portion about endoplasmic reticulum and the further what is there in the text will be taken in the next class. Today you go through the nucleus, read it again, hmm? read the text, read it well and the cytoplasm, I'm sure you will understand. If you, are, if you were attentive while I was teaching now, nucleus is just nothing. You can just write by yourself and a short note about cytoplasm and a short what I mentioned about cell organelles and why are cell organelles important. Now what I'm going to do is I want to you all